Hey guys, in this video I want to do a state of the mill, but I also want it to be a follow-up to a video that I made a few years ago called G0704 Initial Tooling Considerations. And uh, a lot of what you're seeing here is stuff that's in that video. If you want to go back and take a look at it first, uh, go ahead and click the link up in this corner and you can go watch that video and then come back and watch this one. Now, I'm not going to give you a ton of information. I just want to breeze over these real quick. If you want, go back and watch the old one to get all the information on what this stuff is and then come back here to get my recommendations on whether or not I would still get it. I'm talking fast for a reason because I know this video is going to go long. The first thing is this granite surface plate. It's a 12 by 18, 3 inch thick. Uh, B grade and I bought it because at the time I got a screaming deal it was on Amazon for 60 bucks with shipping and now I think they charge like $60 just for shipping so if you can find a cheap one they're really handy but I don't have any of the uh, like height gauges or any of that really you know precise layout stuff so it actually doesn't get used very much sometimes I'll use it if I need to you know lap a piece of material really flat I'll tape some uh, sandpaper down and then I'll you know work it back and forth and get a really nice flat edge or a brushed finish on something and then clean it really well and uh, that's about it uh, but they are they are handy to have oh yeah check the description at the bottom of this video for a link to my Google Drive where you can find a spreadsheet where I keep updated links of uh, different tools or as updated as I can. If you notice something's wrong there, shoot me a message and I'll, uh, I'll upload a new version. So let's see, the next thing is a strap clamp kit. Now the G0704 has 7 16th inch T-slots, I believe. Go check the Grizzly site just to double check before you buy one of these. This one uses 3 8 hardware. So we got 3 8 nuts, uh, T-nuts for the T-slots. You get a variety of stud lengths. You get a variety of straps and then the backup blocks for the straps, uh, you know, for different heights or whatever. Um, whether Even if you're going to buy a vise, you're going to use one of these a ton. So I highly recommend getting one. This is a cheap charge unit and it has been fantastic. I haven't stripped anything. It's been great. Um, I highly recommend getting a strap clamp kit. The next thing is parallels. This is also a charge unit. Uh, these have been fantastic. They're perfectly... I have no complaints with them. I've had great luck. They're very parallel. Uh, some of them have developed a little bit of a bow, and you can see I can squeeze that out. Maybe you can see that. And um, it looks like I chipped one. But as far as flatness goes and squareness and parallelismness, <laughs> uh, they're really good. So uh, a char set, I think, is going to be fine for those of you who are just starting out. I have not bought anything better because I frankly haven't needed it. And if you are going to run a vise on your mill, you're going to use uh, parallels all the time. The next thing is my two inch face mill. Uh, this is a 45 degree, two inch, three insert, integral R8 arbor. Um, I loved it, I used it a ton. Once I got the belt drive conversion done, I started having really bad quality uh, or finishes. The finish on my material was terrible. The Shars inserts are good. I don't know what the problem is with the belt drive, but I've basically stopped using this. Uh, if you want to get one, this one is a good one, but if I were starting out, I would actually look at a fly cutter. The Tormach Superfly, a lot of people seem to really like it. It takes less power than running a face mill. You can adjust it to get a, a larger sweep. Some people don't like spindle or uh, fly cutters because they say they're hard on your spindle bearings. I don't know if that's true or not. I just know a lot of people have fly cutters and a lot of people like fly cutters. So uh, that's what I would go with. The next thing up is Tormach tooling, the Tormach TTS system, which is basically this double uh, ring setup with uh, it's kind of inset right there. Um, this is one of their ER20 collet holders. Um, I love this stuff and I buy it directly from Tormach. There are a couple of Chinese companies, uh, Yinsheng, I think, and uh, Darkon. Um, and I know some people have run those, but Tormach dropped their price right after those Chinese ones kind of started showing up, and so I just buy straight from Tormach. The ER20 is nice. It'll go up to a half-inch end mill. Um, I don't go any larger than that on my mill, and I rarely use half inches. So I actually buy more of the ER16s. These will go up to 3 8 inch. Um, they can get into tighter spots, you know, if you're getting down in, like, down into a crack or something like this works great now the, the very first one I bought was this ER32 it's developed some run out so I haven't used it in a long time but you see it can't get you can't get tight into places because it's so big so I wouldn't recommend ER32 uh, for small work let's see the next thing is the boring bar holder that's this guy this is a charge unit I had to buy the arbor separately and it was really long so I had to cut it down it doesn't have the rings and stuff uh, like the Tormach uh, tooling but it still works in the Tormach collet and this has been a really great boring head. Uh, I used it a lot during the CNC conversion to, to make large holes. 
uh, but I haven't actually used it since. You can helically interpolate a hole via CNC, but you're not going to get as perfectly cylindrical as a boring head will. So if you need one, I think the Charge unit is worth picking up. Uh, because it's cheap <laughs> and it works. Now I do hate these sh these uh, boring bars and I understand lathe boring bars have a different geometry they won't work in a boring head but these cheap boring bars you get them on eBay I think you get a, a set of 9 or 12 for like 15 or 20 dollars they're terrible the carbide is clocked differently on every one because they're brazed not precisely enough the geometry on the carbide tip is awful you have to do a lot of work to make these uh, actually work for you so if anybody knows a good source of high-speed steel or even braced carbide uh, tools for a boring bar holder, uh, please let me know because I'd like to buy some good ones of these. The next thing is drill chucks. This is the R8 Arbored drill chuck that came with the mill. It's fantastic. I had great luck with it. It doesn't get used very often. Every once in a while it will get used because this great big long head on my Tormach half-inch drill chuck sometimes limits my travel in the Z. Um, other than that, I love this thing and I actually have their quarter inch chuck as well. Um, I'm probably going to get their three eighths. If you get their keyed chucks, they're quite a bit shorter. Uh, I may grab some of those too. I, I really like these. The next thing is uh, dial indicators. This is the same indicator that I bought uh, when I very first got my lathe. It's the only one I've ever purchased. It's from Shars. It's been fantastic. Now this is a Noga base that I got for a really good deal on Travers website. Uh, and I love the Noga base. Once you go with this style base, you'll uh, you'll never want to go back. I believe Shars actually has a knockoff version of the Noga. It's purple. This was the first magnetic base that I bought, and uh, it had a different forearm on it. It had one of those two-piece forearms that has a knob right here, so you can adjust uh, this. Don't get that. They're 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 sloppy. They're inaccurate. Um, I made this forearm because I hated that one. Other than that, though, it's been really good and you can buy them that have solid forearms like this so if you want a cheap option go with this let's see okay so this is the dial test indicator I bought man I gotta stop doing that um, this is from Shars it was like 50 bucks it reads in tenths and it is a piece of junk do not buy it uh, you're probably gonna have to buy uh, stare at last word. I mean, if you need to read the tenths, you may have to buy a, a stare or a mitotoyo, and you're gonna have to spend some money. Unfortunately, this thing is not smooth, and when it's measuring, the needle jumps around like crazy. Something inside catches and sticks. It's I, do not buy this. Total waste of money. At least mine was. Maybe you, maybe some of you have had better luck. The next thing is calipers. I'm still running cheapo Harbor Freight calipers. This is their eight, six, and four inch. The 4-inch doesn't have the little uh, thumb wheel right here, but I still love it. The 6-inch, this is the one that reads, it'll also read in fractions of an inch. I hate this one and I never use it. And then the 8-inch, this is kind of my uh, everyday, the one I always go for, unless I need to get into a small space to use the 4-inch. I pretty much grab these 8-inches. I'm, I'm honestly not going to buy any mid or anything. Maybe one day if, uh, you know, I'm buying huge equipment and I can afford to just spend, you know, 800 bucks on, on a range of calipers or... 500 bucks or whatever. Maybe I'll get some some high-end ones, but these cheapos, they get the job done. I mean, I've been running this mill for, what, three or four years now, and I'm still running these uh, cheap calipers. I think they're fine. Uh, let's see. Oh, tap holders. You're going to need some of these just for tapping holes. This is the cheap Harbor Freight set. They suck, but they do work. Uh, this one's actually been cut down because I had to get into a tight spot, so I cut the ends off. I should probably get another one. It comes in this set of three. They're just not good, but if you don't have anything else, then get these. I frankly have never bothered to buy nicer ones, and I probably should. Uh, oh, the last thing I wanted to talk about was end mills. Um, you guys know I buy cheap end mills, but I actually realized I've, I think I've been buying good end mills, so maybe I'm confused. If I'm working in aluminum, I buy these uh, YG high speed steel uh, two flute end mills. I get these from latheinserts.com. Um, they are fantastic in aluminum. This is a quarter inch, five eighths length of cut, two flute. They're high helix. They freaking chew through the aluminum. I mean, they're great and they're so cheap. That's this is like an eight dollar end mill, or you know, ten eight, eight or ten dollars something like that. Um, I love those. If I'm not doing aluminum or if I need something else, then the brand I've been buying for quite a while is called uh, HTC. And I find these on eBay, and I didn't. I never really bothered to look and see if HTC was a company, but I recently read that HTC is actually the maker of Maritools end mills. All of Maritools stuff is HTC, even if it's not labeled. 
That's what that's what I read online, and people were saying, oh yeah, Maritool was keeping it a secret, or they weren't telling people, but now the cat's out of the bag. Um, these have been fantastic. I, I mean, I always call them my cheapos, but then when I, I sat down and started thinking about it, I actually never have problems with these end mills. They're, they're always really reliable. It's other brands of cheapos that I have, and I have tons. Uh, Shars are garbage. Um, I don't know, other eBay finds that have never worked out. But these HTCs, I actually don't have any complaints. This is a, let's see, this is a carbide four flute, quarter inch. What is that? Three quarter inch length of cut. Oh, it looks like this one's had a little bit of, this one, this is, so this is my, this is a beater is what this is. How come I haven't colored it? I usually just draw on my, uh, on the lids. I'll put a little Sharpie marker on there so I know which ones are my beaters. This one's not looking too good, but uh, yeah, so HTC. And so what I've been doing lately when I buy end mills, uh, there's a, a YouTube, an eBay store, and I'll get these link in the description or maybe on that uh, spreadsheet on my Google Drive. Um, I'll, I'll check these ver against the Mara tools and find out who's cheaper that day. And then that's who I order from. And, uh, oh, that one's a beater too, you can see. And I've had really good luck with them. Uh, this other company, I've bought some of their ruffers because they're on eBay and they're, and they're pretty inexpensive uh, comparatively. It's called Specialized Tool Solutions, STS. Uh, this is one of their, this isn't a ruffer, this is a three flute um, for aluminum and it has been fantastic. Uh, but I have a half inch ruffer, a three eighths ruffer uh, from these guys and they've been really good. So um, yeah, STS, uh, I'll put that link in the file or below as well and that is all for this video uh thanks for watching and um, if you have any ideas suggestions for future state of the mill uh videos let me know and i'll see you guys in the next one